joining us. 9.42 is the time. Let's turn our attention back to that uh, um, extraordinary hostage taking uh, at a synagogue in Texas over the weekend. It ended with, uh, thankfully, those who were taken hostage, including a rabbi, uh, being able to get free uh, and safe. Uh, but the man who uh, took them hostage was shot dead by US police. He was Blackburn born Malik Faisal Akram. Uh, and uh, he uh, as was known to be uh, someone who was, well, some extremist views on 9 11 attacks. And it's now emerged that he flew to New York at the end of December. Two teenagers in South Manchester uh, have also been arrested by UK police working closely with their, their Texan counterparts. Let's talk about this with Gideon Falter. He's chief executive of the Campaign Against Anti Semitism. Good morning to you, Gideon. Good morning, Julia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, um, investigation is continuing into how he was able to well fly to America, get into America, given uh, uh, what was known about this man, uh, but, but also investigation continuing with two teenagers who have been arrested in this country. A lot of the concern, though, is, is the motivations uh, uh, for uh, Malik Faisal Akram in terms of why he would have thought that taking a rabbi and others hostage in a synagogue would have what purpose it would have served, and what his aims really were. Well, more is going to come out about this, but so far what we know is that uh, from the hostages themselves that he thought that he could walk into a synagogue, demand to speak to the chief rabbi. Of course, there is no chief rabbi in the United States. Uh, and that the Jews are so incre incredibly omnipotent and powerful that they could intercede to have this person, uh, this 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 criminal terrorist uh, that he wanted released from prison. No, known as appropriately as Lady Al Qaeda. She's known as Lady Al Qaeda, yes, uh, and also deeply uh, deeply anti-Jewish person as well. Uh, she uh, a legal team was hired for her by the Pakistani embassy uh, during her trial, and she rejected them on the grounds of the. They were Jewish, and there's a whole story there too. But this uh, this Mr. Akram from the UK thought that he could go into a synagogue and tell the local Jews, call up the chief rabbi, get this person out of prison, because he had believed the Jew anti-Jewish conspiracy theories that he presumably... And, and this is the issue, isn't uh, it? Uh, this unique situation with racism, or the particular unique situation with racism against Jewish people is not just, I mean, the racism, I mean, racism is horrific in any circumstance, but the belief that people in somehow are inferior to you or below you because they're a different race. But, the, but, but there seems to be this, among anti-Semites, that feeling alongside the same... Uh, at the same time, a view that, that Jews are all powerful and that there is this secret cabal of puppet masters who are all Jewish, who are controlling the financial system, the world's government and everything else. I'm responsible for every ill in the world. And, and that is a long-standing anti-Semitic trope that goes back hundreds of years. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're completely right. Anti, Anti-Semitism, anti-Jewish racism is pretty unique in that sense, in that most racism say that somebody else is inferior. Anti-Semitism says that Jews are, at, at the same time, inferior and also vastly cunning and superior and powerful. And that's why some of these conspiracy theories are so dangerous. And actually, it raises some really interesting questions about law enforcement, both in the US and the UK. Um, in the US, it seems that they just didn't understand this. During the attack itself, you know, there's a man in a synagogue demanding that Jews uh, release a, a, a terrorist prisoner in the US. Um, and the FBI put out a statement saying that the attack was not specifically related to the Jewish community, which, yes. of course... And, and, of course, the usual talk about him having mental health problems. And, of course, you know, and, and look, maybe he did have mental health problems, but people who are mentally ill don't suddenly decide that Jews control the world. And this is something which UK authorities now need to answer. You know, who was this man? Um, where were his family, his friends, did they know? Where was his local community? Uh, we've already seen a disturbing statement by uh, the uh, Facebook group called Blackburn Muslim Community, which as of this morning has been deleted, um, where you know their initial reaction was to uh, ask, uh, quote, the, Al the Almighty to bless him and afford him the highest ranks in paradise. Um, and then, of course, they said later, actually, we didn't re we didn't realise, you know, what had happened here and we didn't know the circumstances of his death, which is absurd because they actually referred to it in their original yeah. post. So we've and got it all was sorts all of over questions here. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, the, the, we do. We do. I mean, we, we have to move on. We've only got a few more moments, which is unfortunate because it's such an important, important topic. But it is, it is a very, very worrying thing. I spent a lot of my formative years in in North London. I do not recall this you know, the, 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 the anti-Semitism that is now considered to be so almost routine. I don't recall that being an issue for for my my Jewish friends uh, at all. This was not something people talked about. And 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 when I've talked to them since, and say, you know, was this a thing? Were you experiencing this? And they said no. They were totally unaware of anything going on. It wasn't an issue. It was something that was seen as something in the past and something that was dying out, apart from a, a few horrible, you know, right wing extremists who seem to hate everybody. The, the growth of anti semitism across the world, in this country, in America, Middle East, elsewhere, um, it's a very worrying trend. And particularly with the, especially with COVID and lockdowns, the the pointing of the finger and the othering, the let's blame somebody for our ills. This is a really, really scary time, particularly for the Jewish community. Yeah, look, it, it's been really scary, particularly over the last few years. Like you said, you know, there was a lot of attention on the far right, but there's now, you know, with the Corbyn years, we've seen some of the spotlight move to the far left, where there have been some really awful, uh, some really awful incitement. And now I think with this incident, we're going to see a lot of spotlight on Islamist anti-Semitism um, and, you know, yep. where exactly uh, these conspiracy theories sort of all over overlap, because to some extent, the growth of anti-Semitism has been enabled by social media, where all of these labels, far right, far left, Islamists, don't really count anymore. It's the conspiracy theories which are spreading this. And I guess we'll find out more in the coming days and weeks. Indeed. We appreciate you joining us. Gideon Folter, Chief Executive of the Campaign Against Anti-Semitism. 9.48 is the time. This is Talk Radio. Good talk. Hot talk. Hot talk.